Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land. I'm Arlene Marks, your host, bringing you those top stories from Israel. And we continue with our special coverage of Operation Guardians of the Wall. Rockets have continued to be fired into Israel today from terrorist elements within the Gaza Strip. Earlier today, rockets were fired at southern communities as well as towards the town of Ashkelon and just a short while ago towards Ashdod and surrounding areas. Interceptions were heard over Rishon, Litzion and Rehovot, which is just very, very close to where I am now. The IDF has continued to strike Hamas targets within the Gaza Strip, including the tunnels that uh, were responsible or where Hamas terrorists managed to kidnap and kill soldier Hadar Golden. We are still waiting for the return of the remains of Hadar Golden and Oron Shaul, two IDF soldiers killed during Operation Protective Edge. Last night, the IDF said that they had dropped 122 bombs on at least 40 targets, including launches, including tunnels, including weapons manufacturing depots. Earlier today, Prime Minister Netanyahu and Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi addressed the Foreign Diplomatic Corps, uh, telling them that... Um, while we are looking at the situation on the ground, while we are busy defending ourselves, there is no uh, timeline as to when there will be a ceasefire. Last night it was reported that an Egyptian brokered ceasefire had been agreed to by Hamas and would start to come into play at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Israel declined to comment and early this morning it was broadcast that Hamas had not agreed to the ceasefire either. An unnamed source within the military said that the Israeli side is looking and assessing at the moment whether or not the climate is right for a ceasefire but uh, declined to comment when he expected that to take place. At the moment, if we look at what the, uh, the numbers are, we have had nearly 4,000 rockets in the last 10 days fired from the Gaza Strip towards Israel. 12 deaths, including two Thai foreign workers yesterday who were killed when they um, uh, were hit uh, during a bombardment on the south. And over 350 people have been injured as a result of rocket fire. In his address to foreign diplomats, Bibi Netanyahu paid respects or sent his condolences to the governments of India and Thailand. Israel, in the meantime, has continued to allow humanitarian aid to enter the Strip. This is after taking a direct hit yesterday to aid convoys being allowed into the Strip. A soldier was lightly injured by shrapnel and was taken to Barzilai Hospital. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, also confirmed yesterday that he had received uh, intelligence reports on why the media building that housed Associated Press in Al Jazeera was targeted and leveled. He said that he had received satisfactory uh, intelligence but would not be commenting on this. This comes as uh, more foreign pressure uh, 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 builds towards a ceasefire. Israel has said that there are no timelines to the ceasefire. We will uh, want to finish the job. We will want to cripple Hamas's terror infrastructure as much as possible so that both the people of the Gaza Strip and Israeli uh, civilians can live in peace. President Biden has expressed his hope for a ceasefire as soon as possible. And uh, Israel thanked the Hungarian leadership for um, abstaining to sign a EU statement on uh, the situation between Israel and the Gaza Strip. The reason Hungary gave was that it was extremely biased and did not include the firing of rockets by Hamas into Israel. Without a full consensus, no statement can be made. And we are expecting the UN General Assembly to meet tomorrow. Last week, the United States vetoed a statement by the Security Council, which led to China uh, accusing the United States of, uh, or the racist United States, they said, of blocking this. In other news, while we are speaking about foreign leaders and racism, 
earlier today, the U.S. Secret, the U.S. State Department, rather, as you can imagine, I am still exhausted. Uh, the U.S. State Department released a statement uh, condemning Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan for comments that he made that were anti-Semitic. He alluded to the uh, Israelis' drinking of Palestinian blood, which is an ancient and anti-Semitic blood libel. Some more controversy this time turning to China and Israel's embassy in Beijing have uh, launched uh, their protest to comments made on CC television. This is uh, Chinese foreign media. It is broadcast in English. It is broadcast around the world. Comments made by a Chinese official included uh, the allegations of um, Jews controlling the finances and the uh, and the uh, internet, saying that is uh, the United States' pro-Israel policy was based on uh, Jewish control. Some ancient, horrible uh, anti-Semitic libels again there, and saying that the U.S. was using Israel as its beachhead to launch a war against pan-Arabism. And uh, comments from uh, CCTV have not been responded to. Or rather, CCTV has not responded to any questions. So those are the top stories taking place around Israel under fire. And I bet you thought that there was absolutely no positive news. I know we are all looking at social media. We're looking at the news media thinking, how on earth are they drawing a moral equivalent between a terror entity like Hamas and a sovereign democratic state defending itself like the state of Israel? But there is positive news. We heard last night that our Eurovision star Eden Alena has qualified for the final of Eurovision. So if you have access to Eurovision in your country, get voting. It would be amazing if we saw Israel win this again and bring Eurovision back to Israel. And earlier today, we had confirmation of the candidacy for two possible uh, candidates for the President of Israel. Our much-beloved President Reuven Ruvi Rivlin steps down in July, but uh, it is now official. Both Isaac Herzog, who is the head of the Jewish Agency for Israel, and the son of a former President, Chaim Herzog, has put forward his official candidacy, as well as activist and author Miriam Peretz, much beloved here in Israel. She sadly lost two of her sons uh, to combat and has uh, been a tremendous, tremendous uh, advocate for uh, positivity, for healing, and uh, for the right of uh, Israelis to defend themselves over the years. So may the best man or woman win if Miriam Peretz is elected president, which will only uh, be done by the Knesset. The Knesset elects the president, not the people of the country. She will become Israel's first female president. So uh, may the presidential race begin and we look forward to seeing who the winner will be. Those are your top stories making headlines so far. We will be continuing with our special coverage, Israel under fire, Israel on Operation Guardians of the Wall again tomorrow. In the meantime, please check out our website at www.layoftheland.online for our ongoing content there. On Facebook at Lottle site. If you're viewing this here on Facebook, please like us, follow us, share our content, play a role in helping to get Israel's side of the story out to the masses. We know that the global media has been weaponized and uh, we too can be an iron dome against misinformation. We're also on Twitter at Lay of the Land 5, that's at Lay of the Land 5, follow us there. Or subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. Our channel is at the Israel Brief. I'm Rolene Marks, more than a little exhausted as we all are here in Israel with our, our sleep being interrupted, with our nerves being on edge and uh, with the constant bombardment of uh, information and uh, sirens. I wish you all a peaceful, a healthy rest of your day and we'll check in with you tomorrow for your latest updates.